Mario has become an iconic video game character and has stuck his finger into many pies of gaming genres, from karting, doctoring, jumping and over the last few years starring in his own RPGs. These RPGs have become iconic with Nintendo fans from the original SNES Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, the GBA and DS Mario and Luigi Saga, to the highly acclaimed Paper Mario series. The latest of these is Paper Mario Sticker Star for the 3DS. This is the first time Paper Mario has been transferred to the portable devices from the console. Is this another must-have Mario? RPG or is it just paper thin? Let's go! Sticker Star starts like any good Mario game, with Bowser attacking the festival celebrating the arrival of the Sticker Comet, and of course this comet bestows godlike powers onto him and he kidnaps Princess Peach again and smashes Mario to a pulp again. But this is where Paper Mario falls flat though, no pun intended. The previous games have been driven by very funny narration from unique characters that isn't expected of the Mario universe and fun little twists in the story arc along the way. Even Bowser has been given limelight in these games and his story arc is always funny. However, there is none of that here. Bowser doesn't even speak once in the whole game. This leaves us with a bland and unoriginal story. I did smirk once or twice during the game, but with poor script writing you're left with a simple 10 to 12 hour RPG of turn based combat. Uh oh! With Paper Mario being on the 3DS, Nintendo made the smart decision to create a world with lots of bite sized levels, each lasting from 5 to 30 minutes each. Very good for portable gaming. Each of these levels generally boil down to finding a sticker star. We'll do this by beating up Gumbas, jumping around the 3D environment, and solving puzzles of the level. This is where the game's sticker mechanic comes in. Mario is able to remove and add stickers to the world. Since Bowser's destroyed areas of the level, you need to find the pieces he's removed to progress further. You'll also find 3D objects that you can turn into stickers, which you will use to solve environmental puzzles. For example, you can find an electric fan that will help you turn a windmill that has stalled and blocked a door you need to gain access to. But you'll soon encounter poor level design and the same puzzles repeating themselves. There are even sections with hidden blocks in the environment you need to hit to progress with no clue that they were there. I had to use an FAQ a few times to actually find these blocks. I shouldn't be expected to keep whacking my hammer around till I strike it lucky. Yeah, that's right! With this called Sticker Star, you expect there to be a lot of stickers. There is a metric ton of them. You find them dotted around the world and you peel them off and add them to your sticker book, which is your inventory. At first, this sounds like an interesting system, but it's the exact opposite because you start avoiding the combat altogether. You don't want to use up all your stickers by the time you get to a boss or a mini challenge on the level. But you're thinking, since this is an RPG, you really should be doing the random battles. Well, no! Nintendo decided to strip away a lot of the classic mechanics such as gaining experience and leveling up. This raises the question. Why do random battles if you're actually wasting your infantry doing them? All you gain by doing the battles are coins which are used to buy replacement stickers. Don't get me wrong though, the combat is actually fun. Your stickers come in all variations from jumping, hammers and iconic Mario items such as shells and fire flowers. You've got to work out your enemy weaknesses and exploit them. You can even combine stickers together to create devastating combos. Like previous Mario RPGs, each attack has a timing element to it that can increase the length or the damage of the attack. This has always been the best thing about Paper Mario's combat because each timing attack is different for each sticker. Some of the 3D world items that you turn into stickers can be used in combat as well. These are super powerful and are key to winning some of the boss battles of the game, but these shouldn't be necessary to beat the bosses in the game, which it generally boils down to. You've just spent 15 to 30 minutes going through the boss level without any clues what the boss will be and its weakness, just to find out you don't have the correct sticker to defeat it. You've only got one choice, quit the level and get the correct sticker off a visual clue the boss does or its location. For example, the World 2 boss is a giant spiky cactus. Its HP is over 300 and up to this point you've had no clue what you'll be facing. The boss appears on top of an ancient tower which has a baseball park at the top which you only discover when the fight with the boss begins. The weakness for this boss is a baseball bat sticker that damages for 250 HP and makes the overall fight trivial. This sticker however was hidden one level back inside a tomb. So if you don't have this you've got to face down an overpowered boss which up to this point in the game the most health enemies have had has been 20 HP. This backtracking is all too common and having to redo boss levels again to reach it is annoying. Even with shortcuts unlocked. I would have not minded this if there had been clues to the nature of the boss beforehand, but nope, you're going in blind and I feel this is why the game feels stretched and slightly boring. The one thing that Sticker Star actually gets right is the visual style of the Paper Mario world. Even though the locations are quite generic for the series, it feels alive with its pop-up book look. This is actually the first 3DS game I've enjoyed having the 3D on. Music is good, but no stand-up pieces and far too few remixes of classic Mario songs. Be prepared to be humming that battle music role. This gets embedded into your head. Paper Mario Sticker Star has some of the best 3D visuals on the 3DS, but is let down by gameplay and story that has made the other Paper Marios iconic with fans. By 
dumbing down the story and removing the comedy elements of the game, you're stuck with Baby's First RPG. You'll get a good 10 hours out of this game, but is it fun? I can't say I enjoyed it. I was just playing it to pass the time on the train to work and back. If you've played the other Paper Marios, I would only recommend you buy this if you're desperate for a new 3DS game or if it's on sale. Everyone else, go track down a copy of the brilliant Paper Mario 1000 Year Door on the GameCube, or hopefully someday it will be released on the virtual console. You won't be disappointed. Bye bye! Mm.